Welcome back guys. If you're watching this series on this amp build for the Raven 3 watt D-Lab electronics amp. Um, if you haven't watched the rest of that series and you want to build this amp, I go through step by step every single connection, every part you need, and everything in super detail uh, for this build. This is again D-Lab Electronics. Please check out Terry's channel, D-Lab Electronics on uh, YouTube. Uh, he's got tons and tons of great videos on servicing amps, building amps. I love his designs. His amps sound great. This amp sounds awesome. Very simple design, but it has just such a great warm tone. I built many of these and um, in the previous videos to this one, uh, you can go through and see the actual steps, step by step on actually building this from scratch, okay? So if you followed along there, great. If you haven't followed along and you just wanna check out labeling and amplifier at home, uh, this is one method to do it. There are many, many, many methods you can use, okay? So you don't have to follow, you know, watch those previous videos if you want to learn how a different way to maybe add some labels to your amplifiers at home. I've I've done so many different methods of doing it. I, I, I've had stuff where, you know, I've printed with ink onto a certain type of a paper and ironed the labels on. That way sucks. I've used uh, water decals. That had its own issues. This method here, I'm using a vinyl cutter machine, like a Cricut machine. This one happens to be the Cameo Silhouette, right? Um, it's it's like brother to the Cricut machine. Um, I can't remember why I chose this one over that one, uh, but uh, they both work almost identical, right? They have their own software. You design your labels, you cut it out onto vinyl, and it sticks to your chassis and makes for some pretty nice looking labels. It does a great job of cutting very fine detail. Um, but this method, like all the other methods, is a pain in the ass, okay? I'm just gonna say it. It can be a pain in the ass. It's gonna take you some practice with these things, okay? So I'm gonna explain this on the Cameo Silhouette. Cricut may have some slightly different settings than I'm gonna show you here for doing this. Um, I'm sure in principle it's the same but it, it just takes some time to get used to the software that comes with these things practice cutting my biggest issues that i've had with the cutting vinyl is that i can't get the letters to come off uh you know like the parts that cut around the letters i want to strip that off and just keep the letters there and it's very difficult sometimes the letters will lift off with the stuff that's around it and it can be a real pain in the butt to work with um but the results are great. The results look nice. So if you can just get enough practice in and trying this thing out and figuring out all the little nuances of how deep to cut the vinyl and all that kind of stuff and the type of vinyl you're using, once you get a little practice down, this method works great for just doing some simple labeling at home. Okay. There's, you know, you can send, you can design a face plate or a back plate in this case and have a company laser etch the 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 stuff right in this case it's a one-off build i'm only building one of these it's only going to have these dimensions one time so i'm going to do my own labels here at home so here's how we do it let's get started okay the first step i have to do is actually open the software that comes with my vinyl cutter machine and put some labels in so i've already done that here in the interest of time i'm not going to show you exactly how to add the labels in and, um, you know, I'll show you a couple tips and tricks, but there's tons of videos out there on how to kind of do the basics of labeling. So please, you know, look up your model of vinyl cutter that you have if you're using one and, uh, you know, kind of just look at the basics of creating, you know, your first designs and stuff. And this will show you my tips and tricks for amp labeling specifically are this. You want to make sure that your letters are blocky, that they don't have a lot of serifs on them, um, and that they're not really cursive, because I've tried stuff like that, and it's almost impossible to work with. It's just so difficult. The blockier the letters are, the better, and you also want to make sure that the font size is large enough, okay? Uh, let me zoom in on this a little bit. What I want to show you is each one of these square blocks on here on this grid is one inch, right? So it makes it very easy to kind of tell. So you can see that this 120 volts here 
uh, is taking up probably about a half an inch, right? So that's how large I have these. The smaller I go, the more of a pain in the butt it's going to be to weed out these letters for putting them onto your amp. And I'll get to that and show you that part. I've kind of found what works well for me as far as the size. In this case, I'm using a 13-point font, right, on this one. Uh, and my font I'm using is just Arial, okay? Uh, I'm using a PC here, so with Mac you could probably use a similar font. Uh, but again, just try to keep it blocky. I'm also using all uppercase. That helps a lot too because all the letters are the same size. So they're going to peel away from here uh, fairly evenly every letter, right? So that's one of the things. Another thing that helps is to put a rectangular box around different sections of the labels. So like this rectangular box here, it's what it's going to do is when I after it cuts all this stuff out, I can peel away just this box and just just keeping the letters there, right? So I don't have to peel everything all at once. I can peel stuff in sections. So definitely put a cutting box around uh, this stuff. And everywhere you see a red line here is what's going to get cut by the vinyl cutting blade, okay? So it's going to cut around each letter. It's going to cut around the square rectangular boxes here, right? It's going to cut around those and we'll be able to peel this stuff off leaving just the letters and we're going to use transfer tape to actually stick them from here onto our chassis our amp chassis okay so again this is the silhouette software from the cameo machine cricket software i'm sure looks very similar you want to add your fonts uh, put boxes around things and i try to just for conserving the amount of vinyl I'm actually using. Notice how when I zoom out here, I'm just using the top portion of this. If I scroll all the way down, it makes it a lot harder for me to conserve the vinyl because right here at this point, like three inches down, I can just chop that off. I only need a three inch piece by, I think these are 12 inches. No, wait, is it 12 inches? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, yeah. So it's 12 inches across. And in this case, I'm using a cutting mat. You can cut these things without using a cutting mat, but I'll show you what that is. Uh, I think it just makes things a little bit more even if you use one versus not using one, but you can try it both ways. Uh, for a while, I was cutting these things without a cutting mat. And in the settings, you can change it and say, I don't want to use a cutting mat. Uh, when I go over to the print mode here and I come over to these options, I can say, um, material, where's the cutting mat option? See, I'm still figuring this stuff out too, right? <laughs> oh, here it is. Sorry. <clears throat> it was in these properties on the side, but see how it says, uh, cutting mat cameo 12 inch by 12 inch. So I'm just using the standard one. It has different ones you can use, but in this case, I do have it selected. If I said none, this border disappears and I can just feed the vinyl straight into the cutter and not use a mat at all. And like I said, it will probably work fine, but in this case I am using a mat, so I'm going to go ahead and select that again. Okay, so put your design in. Uh, I do have my logo in there. That was another process. I had to figure out how to get my logo in there, but I looked up a video. I had a graphic of it and it showed me how to uh, make it so that it was all cutting lines instead of just a graphic. Um, I can't remember even now how I did that, but I did look up a video, okay? So in this case, I need to cut this. So I'm going to come over to the Send tab. I need to connect my uh, machine to my uh, computer. So I'm going to do that real quick before I start cutting. Uh, and I'm going to show you what type of vinyl I'm using. Okay, so I've got my, my machine plugged in and it's connected to my computer. I've got my cutting mat here. You can see this has been used many, many times. You can use these over and over and over again, as long as you're not cutting too deep and cutting through them. But what this is, is a, it has a, like, a little bit of a stickiness to it. Um, so all I need to do is get a piece of vinyl and stick it to there. So what I'm using is this Oracle 651, which is just permanent black vinyl. You can buy them in sheets or you can buy them in the rolls. I find that the sheets are easier to work with because um, you know the rolls might be cheaper, but the sheets 
you don't have to worry about stuff that's rolled up like this. Like this is some transfer tape. When it's rolled up, it's it's real bendy and it's hard to get straight again. So using one of these is great. Now what I could do is since I'm only cutting down three inches for my labels, I don't need a whole sheet. I could just stick this whole sheet to it or I could cut three inches off. Um, in this case, it doesn't matter. I could stick the whole thing on there, but I'm gonna go ahead and just chop off uh, three inches. So I'm gonna use this little cutting tool, right? Get one of these guys. And uh, I'm gonna go a little past what I think I need because you know, I don't want it to start cutting off of the mat. So hopefully you'll be able to see this in the frame here. So I'm gonna do this and pop it in. And I'm just going to go what I think is roughly about I don't know, three to four inches. It might be a little longer than I need, and that's fine. Okay, so there's my piece, and I can save this for another, another cutting. Um, and then all I need to do here is stick this. You can see this, this vinyl will peel off here, and it'll be sticky. And this is what our letters, is, letters are going to go on to. And uh, then we're going to stick those letters to the chassis, okay? So what I want to do is I just want to line this up with the top corner here and put that on there because we've told the software that we're using <clears throat> a cutting mat. So it's going to know to advance uh, this whole sheet down to this spot to start cutting right here. If I'm not using a, a vinyl cutting sheet, then it doesn't go down this far. It just starts cutting at the top of the sheet, right? Um, so I, I don't have to stick this super hard. It just needs to be there so that it's kind of in place. You want to make sure if, if possible, if there's any big bubbles to just kind of try to get those out because if it cuts a letter over where there's a bubble, that may be a little difficult to get that um, letter off, okay? So in either case, it's stuck to it. Um, it's not permanently stuck. I can peel this back off again, but it's just holding it in place, okay? So I need to feed that into my machine. And in this one, the Cameo Silhouette, um, I wanna line up this line here with my, my paper, basically, my, my vinyl. So I'm gonna set it right there and press this little forward button to just get it started so that it knows it has something in the machine, okay? That's all I have to do to get it ready for cutting. Another thing I wanted to mention is that why do I have double sets of everything, like a couple of these things? Why do I have 120 volts, one amp, and I've got another one copied down here, and then I've got my tube types here, and I've got another copy. Well, I do that because sometimes I'll mess one of the words up, and then I gotta set my whole thing back up with another sheet of vinyl and recut to fix a single word uh, if I, you know, peel it in the letter stick and I'm having trouble with a word, I have two sets of them. I have a backup, okay? So I have a backup. I can cut it once and I have two sets. So it just saves me time because I, after doing this so many times, I will screw at least one of these words up probably. And instead of going back and recutting a whole nother sheet, I've already got it, a backup of it, all right? So all we got to do is come over here to the send tab, I have to choose what kind of vinyl that I'm using. And here's where things get tricky for most people. Why you're gonna have, where you're gonna have issues. So I choose the material is this vinyl silhouette Oracle 651. Remember that was exactly the same thing as what I have here, the Oracle 651. So I choose that. However, I've got another preset that I've saved down here uh, which is this one. And what I have preset is what I found works best for me. And this is after cutting dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of these sheets. Because I found that the blade depth just wasn't enough for the longest time and then it was too much. So what works for me with the 651 Oracle, now this is gonna change. If you have a different, maybe even a different color of the 651, these settings you may have to adjust. And that's what's the biggest pain in the butt with doing this with a vinyl cutter is that I find that it's not very consistent. So what works for me is the 651, the blade depth of two, and this is what I'm cutting on a cutting mat, remember. Blade depth of two, you can do zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Make that a two, 
and then the force is how hard it's cutting. I put this all the way up to a 28. Now I used to cut it way down at a 10 or a 12, whatever the default says. Let's see what the default actually says. Cause it was not what, for, for what I'm cutting, this design I'm cutting, it was not working for me. So the 651 default says a blade depth of one, a force of 10 and a speed of five. <laughs> So I completely changed that to something totally different. I did a deeper depth because what was happening was when I went to pe cut this and peel it off, none of the letters were peeling off. It wasn't cutting hard enough or deep enough. So blade depth of two, 28. And I lower the speed down to a two because I find that if it cuts too fast, it might miss some corners slightly on some of the letters. So I lowered that down. So this is what works for me for the 651 Oracle using the Silhouette machine and using a cutting mat, all right? That's something you're probably gonna have to play with. So uh, all I need to do is hit the send button here and we're off. Come over here and let the vinyl cutter do its thing. So notice I have just a standard blade in there nothing crazy just the standard cutting blade that comes with the machine uh, there's only one blade in there but what it did was it set that blade depth to a two and then it's controlling the pressure at a 28 and a speed of two right so i'm gonna let this do its thing for a sheet like this three inches of letters and stuff probably take about five to ten minutes to cut Okay, our vinyl cutter has finished cutting our design. You can sort of see here from the reflection, we've got our little squares um, that sort of encase the different rows of letters here. That's just gonna make it a lot easier. I did have a little extra inch or two, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, it did cut all the way through, and it looks pretty good. So what we need to do next is the weeding part. The weeding part, you have to have a lot of patience for and a delicate hand. It's almost like doing surgery, right? <laughs> Let me show you what tools you're going to need. Exacto blade. Definitely need one. Put a fresh blade on there because it really will make a difference. Um, you want a brand new fresh blade because I'm going to be using just the point of this uh, for getting out little centers of like the O's and A's and D's, things like that. It makes it so much easier if you have a nice fresh blade in there. I think the vinyl cutting tool did come with this. This is just a little weeding tool where you can sort of pick at things. I don't use this all that often. I kind of use this because it's sort of a blunt tip. Um, I use this to hold things down as I'm peeling it off. And then I have a couple different things here of uh, some just different types of tweezers that can help me in certain cases. You don't need to have all these, but um, you know I use them for different things, so you'll kind of see what I'm using where. So just have a couple different pair of tweezers or you know something that's got very fine tips on it, the X-Acto blade, and uh, maybe something to hold things down, like a tool that may have come with the machine, okay? That's pretty much all you need. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of all this vinyl that's like the mass of it, right? So I'm just gonna kinda try to peel up one corner. I just wanna peel the vinyl, okay? So you can see the white backing here, right? So as I peel this, I should make sure, I'm just gonna go slow, that my boxes are staying down now at this point. So I'm just trying to get rid of all this excess stuff. So you can see it's definitely cut through really well or these things would be peeling up with that side of it, all right? So that's all our extra stuff we don't need. And I don't need to peel all of these because remember I made double rows for a couple things. Uh, so I'm just gonna peel one of these rows and leave the other and only peel that one if I need it, if I screw up a word. So here's where it kind of gets tricky and I'm gonna try to Try to zoom in here so you can sort of see what's happening. This is why blocky fonts are very good to use in this case because this can be tricky. Now if my cutter settings did a good job, 
of the right depth and everything. I usually start from the back end of the of the words, right? I don't know why that seems to work better than peeling from the front, maybe with just this font. But what I want to do is I want to just slowly peel and make sure that every letter is staying down. So what I'm going to try to do is really zoom in for you. And if I find that a letter is sticking, I'm going to use this little hook tool to kind of hold it down like this. Just put a little pressure on that. But in this case, it's looking like you don't want to go too fast because if you notice one of the letters starting to come up. Okay, so there's instrument. That looks great. Let's just keep going down the line. See, look, uh, this E is not sticking. One of these parts of the E, see that? It's supposed to say EXT, right? But that bottom foot of that E is not sticking. So what I'm going to do is take my weeding tool and just kind of press down on that bottom part while I peel. And now I can just kind of press to hold it in place. There you go. See that? That's what's going to take a little bit of practice and time. Uh, some letters, there could be some edges that just are going to stick no matter if you get the depth perfect or not. Oh, look, a whole letter came up. Whole letter came up right there. What I think I'm going to do here is, since I've got all this extra, is I'm actually going to make a cut here. Oops. I'm going to make a cut here to just get rid of some of this excess. Okay. And then start fresh. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and a little bit further down the line, just put a couple couple more cuts there um, just because I can work in sections right so I noticed that this one of these letters this N is not staying down on the paper so I'm going to use this weeding tool to just hold it oh yeah see and I think what happens here is Sometimes when there's a bubble or something in this <clears throat> in this vinyl, it just doesn't cut the corners of those letters. There you go. So it can be tricky, um, and I'm kind of glad this is happening here because you can kind of see what I what I'm going through. Um, it's worth it. It takes some time but it's worth it because it does look really nice. It looks really nice and professional once you get this onto your amplifier, okay? So sometimes I find that if you just sort of wiggle it a little, that can also help. Okay, so I got, got that section off, okay? So I wanna continue doing that. Let's just do the rest of this row together so I can show you if there's any other issues that come up. I'm probably not going to go through the entire video, but I want to show you how I weed out the middles of those. Okay, so here I has another troublesome letter. This one doesn't want to stay down. So I'm going to push it down on this side with the little hook tool. Okay, and then try to... See, this is a tricky one. Just got to take your time with these things. This this method may not be for everybody, you know, um, but I find that, you know, every homebrew method of labeling amps that I've used, they all have their own pain in the butt parts to them, right? So you're going to have to deal with some kind of weirdness no matter what methods you use. <laughs> okay. And I don't know if I'm gonna even use that 120 volts uh, USA on this amp, so I'm not gonna peel that right now. Um, but you can see what's happened here is that we've got, 
all of our letters, but they still have the middles. So let me show you how I get the middles out. I found that the best way, the best way is the X-Acto blade. I'm gonna turn this upside down for you so you can just kind of see how I do this. I'm gonna zoom way in. These are super small letters. And you can see that the blade sometimes leaves uh, like this number six here, it actually cut the se the center of it actually came out already, right? When it was cutting, it might have stuck to the blade at one point. Um, so, you know, it, it may do some of this work for you. But uh, the way I do it is um, I take the X-Acto blade and I just kind of pierce the letter. And you see that little tiny piece that just came out? And then I can just sort of, uh, it helps if you get like a, like a tissue or a paper towel or something over on the side here and just, um, take these little pieces of vinyl and just wipe them off over there. Okay. So another one, I just want to stick it. I'll go back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. All right. Now the B. Okay. And all I'm doing is just kind of poking through and lifting up. I've tried doing this with the weeding tool, but the, these letters are so small. This tool doesn't have a really good point on it. That's why a fresh X-Acto blade is going to really help you in this case. This is the best way to do this, to weed out the centers of these really tiny letters. And you'll see these letters don't look so tiny once we put them on the amp. 13-point um, font size is pretty good, pretty good size. But if I go any smaller than that, these little tiny pieces become so much more of a pain in the butt. Now the 8 here, this is probably going to be the hardest one because these are super tiny. But if you have a really nice, let me try for this one. You have a really nice exacto blade. And sometimes just coaxing it out of the way is the is the easiest way to go. Right. Um, there we go. So we're getting there, we're almost there. Oops. Okay, there's the A that one, the A for that one, we have an R over here, and I think that's it for that row. All right, so that's how we weed them out, okay? I'm going to weed out the rest of these the same exact way. I'm going to basically take it this direction, okay? Um, and uh, remember, if you I'm not going to do this row because this is a copy of this top row. If I need it, I'll come back and do that one. But I do want to put a cut in between here and peel this side to that cut and then start another fresh one for that one. And then we have these two strips to do. So I'm going to do those exactly the same way as I did this. Okay, so I've got everything weeded out here that I need. I've got a couple extra copies of some things. Uh, right, so if I screw something up at this stage, I can always peel these off and uh, You know, like even if I just screw up one letter I could peel a letter off of here and stick it there, right? But basically what we're left with with this vinyl cutting stuff is All the letters we've weeded out all the little holes, you know That's all these little specks here that I've gotten out of the centers of the nine and the six and so on but these are still stuck to the backing, right? These letters, okay? So now we need to take some transfer tape and transfer them to our actual chassis. So that's the next step, all right? So you need some transfer tape and there's many different types of transfer tape. And you can look this up again on whatever model. If you have a Cricut machine or you have the Cameo Silhouette like I have, there's different types of vinyl and they also have different stickinesses. And I'm just using whatever the standard transfer tape is. You'll see some of them will say transfer tape with, um, you know, 
heavy sticking or something like that but don't use the heavy the, the really sticky stuff you'll just have issues i think just use whatever the the regular standard is so all this is is clear tape right so we're going to peel this off stick it to our letters and then stick it to our chassis but there's a few things we need to do first before we uh, actually start sticking stuff one is you need to prepare your surface okay so the surface here i've actually already sort of prepared but i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do it again for you guys get the uh 99 isopropyl alcohol i got this on amazon it's a big big container of it but uh you know i use it a lot for cleaning electronics and stuff right so you can probably use rubbing alcohol as well, but the better, higher percentage it is, uh, the better, the less residue is going to be left behind. But you just want to go over your chassis and take a little bit of that alcohol, which is going to evaporate really quickly. And you want to get any oils from your fingers off. Preparing the surface is key to having things stick well. Okay, when it deal when it comes to this vinyl. So I'm going to go ahead and clean at least the areas really good where I know I'm going to be sticking stuff. Of course, all of this. Oh, I need to I need to tighten that input jack down. I'm going to do that first before I start sticking labels here. But anyway, just go go over everything and you'll see there's definitely some dirt and oil that is being picked up by that. Right? All right, I think I've got all my surfaces right now pretty pretty well cleaned, uh, free of dust, dirt, and oil, okay? Uh, I do want to tighten up this input jack real quick. Bear with me a sec. There we go. I think I just... Everything else should be tight. I think I just didn't tighten that one down. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start with the top where I'm going to put which tubes these guys are, okay? That's what I'll start with because this seems to be an easy flat area to work with for our first one, okay? So what I need is uh, over here I've got the, uh, the tube types here, 6SJ7 slash... 5693. Remember in this in this circuit I'm working with, Terry's D-Lab circuit, the 6SJ7 is the preamp tube. I've elected to use one of these really cool old red style ones, which is the 5693s. These are way more expensive, but they look really cool, right? Um, so I just want to label it for myself that I can use either or. They are the same exact tube, right? One is just built with this red color, it's way more ruggedized and it will last a lot longer than most 6SJ7s. I think they're rated for 20,000 hours. So I just want my label to reflect that I can use either tube, okay? Um, so let me move this back here and show you how we do the transfer step. Pretty easy, um, but again, it could be something you could screw up. And if I do screw up, I will show you how I fix it. So what I want to do is I want to take a, uh, a piece that's roughly, you know, roughly long enough to cover those letters. So I'm just going to cut this and I'm going to shorten it just a little bit. Okay. And this, this stuff will go quicker than, it, than you think. You don't have to cut in it a piece for every single word you're doing. I'm going to reuse these a little bit to make things go faster. Um, I find that I can reuse it a couple times. Now, here's a tr here's a trick that I've learned. It is sometimes very difficult to peel this stuff with just your fingers. I mean, sometimes you might be able to get it, but I take my X-Acto blade, wherever that went. Here it is. And uh, just take your time and get a, get a corner. And if you have a fresh blade, this should work really well. Just try to take it so that you're like almost pushing this into the blade there we go and once it starts wait a second I had it and I lost it here we go once I start it I kind of 
press it down on the blade and turn it over and then peel peel it up like this there we go all right so now i have a piece of clear transfer tape right there another thing i do is a little trick my grandfather taught me is when you have tape and it's too sticky and in this case i, I don't know why but it sometimes it's hard to once the letters stick to this it's hard to get them to stick to the chassis without peeling and still staying to the transfer tape. So take an, uh, an area of your clothing. Um, I'm just going to show you this with like my shirt, okay? <laughs> take an area of your clothing and stick the transfer tape to that, okay? And so what it's going to do is pull off some of the lint from your clothes and make it a little less sticky. So when you're using a fresh piece of tape, I find that this method works really well. Um, to kind of loosen some of the stickiness, okay? So now at this point, this is where some of these little tweezers can kind of come in handy because then you can really, your fingers sometimes, you know, are, are blocky, right? It's getting in the way and I can't place things exactly right. So what I want to do is just pick up these letters here for this first tube. So I'm just gonna pop that down on there and then Take a credit card or something with an edge, like a plastic edge like this, okay? This is the, the thing that came with my Silhouette machine, my, and it's basically something I can, you know, press down and uh, kind of get some pressure on that. So what I want to do is just, I'm not pressing super hard, but I just want to make sure that all of these numbers, letters, stick to the tape. So I'm just putting a little pressure on there and grab one corner of it with the tweezers and see, I have to kind of lift this up here and see if they all stuck. Yes, sir, they did. Okay, so now I have that on the transfer tape. Let me bring this into view. And what I kind of like to do for lining them up can be tricky. So, you know, if you have a way to put some tape down or something so that you have a straight line, that's better. In this case, I'm not worried about it being a thousand percent perfect. I'm just going to eyeball it. But I want this to be my label for my preamp tube. There we go. Okay, so you press that down on there, and now here's where you want to apply some real pressure, okay? I'm pressing not as hard as I can, but just more firm than I did before. And what that's going to try to do is stick all that vinyl lettering down to the chassis. And again, you'll have better luck if you prepare that surface with alcohol. Um, and what I need to do now is get the transfer tape off. And here's where things can get tricky is... If letters don't stay stuck, which it looks like they are going to stay stuck in this case, you can kind of take them as you're peeling them and just apply some more pressure to make sure that they're pressed down. And I find that if you just do it from one corner like this and peel it downward, it's better than just lifting straight up because it'll tend to push those letters up. Okay, so there's our label, but what I want to do is just take my finger and just sort of press those down just to make sure that they really are stuck good and that's permanent vinyl so that should not come off on you um, if you took an exacto knife you could scrape that up so if you screwed something up you could scrape those off with a vac with a uh, you know, they should peel up with an exacto knife but that looks pretty good to me nice and clean looking I really like this method it just takes some practice really does uh, there's all these little things you'll get frustrated i was ready to pull my hair out the first time i tried this because i just could not get these things to cut right um, and a lot of times people that use these machines are cutting big designs you know like a like an animal to put onto a cup or something and they're these big shapes when you're dealing with these little tiny letters it can, get, it can be really frustrating. So, all right, so what I'm doing is I'm reusing that tape again. I'm gonna reuse this piece a couple times. And again, I'm just pressing down on the 6F6 to make sure it's stuck to the tape, okay? I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna get my two tweezers because I find that I can place things easier than using 
using my hands. And actually, I don't really like that. I, I think it looks good here. There we go. I'm going to press it down. I'm going to take the little card here. You just use a credit card or something if you don't have one of these little plastic things. But just give a nice firm press on the letters. And then again, peel it downward. I find that works better. Press it down for good measure. There's our 6F6 label. Looking pretty schnazzy. All right. Let's do the last one together just to see if we have any issues. I'm probably only going to use this piece of transfer tape this one last time. I find it like three or four times is pretty good, but then things will start to kind of not be as sticky anymore after you use it too many times. So just pressing that on there. If you're having trouble getting the letters off of the transfer tape, again, try sticking it more to your clothing to get more lint on there so it's not as sticky, okay? If you're having trouble getting these letters off of the tape onto the chassis, you just want to make that tape less sticky. In this case, it seems to be doing well. Okay, there's my 6x5 tube label. I got it in the spot I want it. Apply some pressure with the plastic piece. And then peel it like this, slowly. And I think that is it. There we go. So, really nice. Looks pretty professional. Um, it should stay on there really well. Um, now we got to do the back panel here. So we're going to do that exactly the same way. So I'm just going to show you one section here on the back panel. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and just kind of lift off that plastic and then just sort of press it down here so that I can peel off this backing. There you go. There's my new piece of transfer tape. Again, I'm going to stick this to my clothing because it is a new piece and hopefully it will pick up some lint from my shirt and make it less step, uh, sticky, right? You can stick it a few times. I just find that this works better. I've been doing this for so many times that uh, these letters can be real stubborn and stick to this tape, and you won't be able to get it off this tape if the tape's too, too sticky. All right, so we need to get the instrument and I probably could use my finger to press that down, but I'm going to use this piece of plastic. Again, I just need it to stick enough so that it'll stay stuck to the tape, All right? Now, what I've done here for the back is I've kind of elevated this chassis so it's kind of angled up towards me. Uh, just because it's easier to work with that way, right? Than it, rather it laying flat. Now, this is um, tough to get these lined up perfectly, but I find that if I use a pair of tweezers on each side rather than using my fingers, I can kind of get it where I want it before I place it. So that looks pretty good. Now I can use my finger to just kind of press it down okay and get our plastic tool and really apply a generous amount of pressure don't have to press as hard as you can just just kind of give it a good you want those letters to really stick to that metal all right now peeling off again i find that the best way is taking a corner oh look okay here's an example of the letter sticking Look, the, the I and the N are actually still sticking to the tape. They're not on the chassis yet. So what I'm going to try is really applying more pressure here on those letters. If I screw this up, I've got another instrument word printed out, but I'm going to try to salvage this one because it is, yep, see, it's still sticking to that tape, that letter I. Yeah, they're being, that letter I and N are being really stubborn. So 
again, I probably should take the tape, should have taken the tape and stuck it to my shirt a few more times to make it less sticky. But there is one way you can try to salvage this. And what I try to do is just peel it back. Let's see if you guys can see this. Peel it back. And I'm going to see if I can actually get it to... lift off of the tape with the exacto knife it's this is uh, this may or may not work <laughs> hold on a second this is why this stuff can be a real pain in the butt sometimes all right i kind of I might have to reposition them a little bit. Oh, look, the T is being stubborn on me, too. I want to see if I can get the T to just stick down with this. Son of a gun. It's not wanting to. Oh, man. There we go. Oh, see, I'm having a lot of trouble with this word, and I think the reason why I'm having trouble here is because it's the tape is just still too sticky. All right. Uh, not super happy with the way that turned out, but I can kind of move these a little bit before I permanently stick them. Uh, I'm just going to go with it like that. Not bad. Not great, right? That's the trouble you have with this stuff, man. Okay, it can be frustrating. I'm happy with that. When I zoom back out, it looks a little better. All right, so this tape was just too sticky. The letters were sticking to it too much. So again, I can reuse this piece of tape, but I want to stick it to my shirt again. Maybe stick it to a couple different areas because I want it to be less sticky. So if it picks up some of that lint from your clothing, it's going to be a little less sticky. Okay. So that's the kind of stuff you have to kind of play with here. Um, let's try one more piece and just see if we have that same trouble. Now that I've stuck it, stuck it to my clothes a couple times, it might be less sticky. So I want to do, uh, let's see. Let's do speakers. This piece is a little long, so I'm just going to kind of hold it there. And again, don't apply too much pressure at this step, but I do want enough that it sticks to the tape. Okay, good. So we got our speaker's word there. Let's give this a shot and see if we can get this to work. So... Grab this with both tweezers. I'm going to put that in between the two jacks. Okay. And apply pressure for the letters and hope that the tape is not as sticky as it was on the other word. Yes, yeah, sir. See that? We are good. The tape was just too sticky by itself. The letters didn't want to lift, didn't want to come off of it. So that little trick with the shirt and the lint really, really works. Okay. So there's our speakers, and I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna put main and main and external on there. Uh, I need to put the eight ohms somewhere in here so people know that you know whoever plugs in that this is an eight ohm speaker. I'm going to put the uh, tube mode versus diode mode rectifier. I'm going to put those two there. And I do want to let people know what amperage this is, what, what fuse rating. So this is a one amp fuse in this amp. And again, the fuse is, is in this IEC. I can just pull out this tray and get to the fuse. So I, I want to put that somewhere on here. I don't have a lot of room, but just so that people know, 
um, you know, in case the wrong fuse value was put in there, what does this amp actually require? And that'd be a one amp fuse. So I'm gonna put that somewhere on there. And then probably for some of this other stuff, I may just, if I have room, I may just put that on the top part of the chassis somewhere else, uh, just to kind of note the year it was made and what model it is. <clears throat> And I'll do that exactly the same way. So <clears throat> I'll show you uh, the finished product here when I'm done. I'm not going to show any more, but I, I go through the same exact process with sticking with the transfer tape and uh, getting it onto the chassis that way. All right, we are completed. Everything is done on our amplifier. It turned out amazing. I really love the look of it. I just cleaned up my little workstation here and... Uh, this is what we built. Again, if you've been following along through this whole build series, we built the D-Lab Electronics Raven Amp 3-Watt Guitar Practice Amp. So it had the three tubes in it, our 6SJ7, our 6F6 Power Tube, and our 6X5 Rectifier. And I built it into this old, really cool Philco Bakelite radio. Some people say Bakelite, but I like to say Bakelite. And uh, here's how she turned out. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Man, it really turned out nice. So I'm using the original knobs, and let's take a look at the finished labels. So if you guys were watching this past, this video here, you'll see I had already started the labels, but um, completed them. So it didn't turn out, you know, super, super perfect or anything like as far as the alignment goes, but it's pretty close. I'm happy with it. I think it looks nice. I've got our one amp fuse, our diode versus tube rectifier switch. We have a main and, a, and an external speaker jack. And the total is eight ohms, right? So I could have two 16 ohm cabinets plugged in at the same time and that would equal eight ohms total. Or I could plug in a single eight ohm here in the main jack, right? Uh, I just don't wanna put a four ohm load on this amp. Four ohms is not enough. We have to have at least eight ohms of resistance. So I could plug a single 16 ohm uh, speaker or cabinet into this, um, or two 16 ohm cabinets would actually equal eight ohms, but 16 by itself would be okay. That'd be a safe mismatch. So you have plenty of options there for our speakers. I've got the model uh, D-Lab Raven three watt here. There's where our instrument goes. We've got our labels for our tubes in case Anybody ever needs to change them or swap them out, they know exactly which um, type of tube goes there in each spot. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Let me get a, see if I can get a flashlight here. But inside I've decided to put my, my logo in there. I had a very small printout of the logo, um, but you can kind of see it in the back there. <laughs> so I'll try to zoom in on that so you guys can see. Uh, right there on the chassis in the front there, uh, just so, you know, just kind of put your name on it, right? And that's it. So I've got the LED that lights up the faceplate. It's just kind of, um, I may take this wire and just kind of, um, you know, affix it to the inside a little bit better, but I don't think I'm going to put a back on this one. If I did put a back on this, um, it does have these little little holds up here that I could actually screw stuff into, which is kind of nice. Um, obviously, I wouldn't want to cover up the back panel here. So if I did put a back on it, I'd probably want it to come down, you know, to here. But I like the way this breathes right now. These tubes do get very hot and uh, it's plenty well ventilated in the back. So I may just keep it like that um, or just cut a little piece of board or something um, and maybe leave like a little open hole here for the heat to escape. Uh, and I'll show you what I use for that stuff. Um, so it, back in the day, old radios, you know, they used kind of like a, a piece of cardboard that was a little bit more heavy duty, right? For the backs of these, you'll see these old brown sort of backings. So you can get very similar material. This stuff I use is great. It's called hardboard, and it, I get this on Amazon. You can get it in all different sizes, but this is basically just a flat one eighth of an inch panel, um, and you know, and it kind of looks sort of like a sort of like a, a cardboardy sort of kind of thing, almost like a wood. But you can see how that looks. 
it's a very hard material um you know not extremely hard so it's very easy to drill through and, and stuff like that but you can kind of see how that would look so if i wanted to cut a piece of this um i could actually do something like that and then possibly screw it into the top there um but yeah i use this stuff all the time it's great it works really well um but again i think i'm going to keep this one the back of it open um no, nothing really wrong with doing that and it's going to be more ventilated oh and i've also um i've also drilled i'm going to flip it like this so you can see i've also drilled four holes underneath now let me get the light on it for you it's kind of hard to see okay so you see those two screws right up at the top here so I, what i did was i just took my drill bit and i just went straight through the bake light and I did that on both sides. Remember I had that piece of wood on the inside of the chassis, right? You can see it right here, right? Just to kind of on the sides, just to support that. Well, that made a perfect <clears throat> uh, thing to screw the chassis into the Bakelite. So I didn't tight, I tighten these tight, but not uber, uber tight because uh, it would probably crack the Bakelite if I tightened them too much. But it's plenty enough that if this were to be upside down, that chassis is not coming out on you, right? There's four screws in there, uh, and I just used kind of like wood screws because I'm screwing into wood, right? So that's how I mounted it, uh, and I think it turned out really well. Let's give it one more, uh, one more power up and listen here before I stop the video. Sounds awesome. So we have our uh, volume over here. And our tone. Turn that up just a hair. It sounds so good. I've got it on the uh, rectifier, the diode rectifier mode right now, so it's just a little punchier. Breaks up just a little bit, which is kind of nice. Get a little tiny bit of edge of breakup, and then you can use your guitar's volume to, you know, sort of uh, dial that in where you want it. So if I put the volume just a little bit up on my guitar. Mm -hmm. 